apologize. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. This case is D516583 Crane versus Sevilla. It's set today for plaintiff's motion for unsupervised visitation with the child. Defendant has an opposition to counter motion. Counsel, find your appearance for the record. Robert Glennon, bar number 2143 for uh, plaintiff uh, Stanley Crane. Good afternoon and welcome. And Brandy, you are defendant, uh, mother representing yourself, correct? Yes, sir. Welcome. Okay, great news. Dad did complete 12 weeks of a patch. Um, and I'm open to him having uh, time with the child unsupervised. I do want to reiterate, though, and there may have been some confusion about this at the last hearing, and I didn't review it, and it's not in the minutes, is that he had been ordered to do another half, another half not the whole year, but a 28-week DV uh, class at options, and we talked about whether or not I would accept his prior um, compliance with such a program that he had completed in 2013, but since then he had two more TPOs. So I felt, no, he needs to do it again, that's why. But I'm not saying he couldn't have unsupervised while he's doing that. That's kind of where I'm leaning, and I'll listen to argument on both sides. And it's your motion, Robert, so you go ahead, and whenever you're done, Mom can, Mom can argue. And that's the actual nature of the motion is that was the understanding I left court with was uh, six weeks on the patch. Twelve weeks. And he would get he unsupervised. I was, I, I think the minutes show that it was 12 and it was, you were talking about six weeks maybe supervised by some of the family members. That's right. why we did then, that. Right. But now we're past the 12 weeks. And yeah, we would and suggest, I'm very happy you did it. Just that part's good. Um, we're just very, very worried about the uh, the nature of the visits. We have, I think, four or five visits that were canceled by. I know. I read that in the report. I was going to ask Mom about that, what was going on. And she's alleging nude photos and sex and photos that would be bad for the kid. We They brought it up in uh, Judge Kearns' court regarding, I think it was the criminal DV charge, and... Uh, the court heard that and heard the yeah, nature surrounding it, it and uh, didn't do anything. And, it, and Mr. Uh, um, Crane is here to explain anything there. And we didn't get any visits at Christmas at all. And we believe that there isn't any violence, but it seems that if Your Honor... If they were denied the TPOs, it would be one thing that they were granted. Um, it, Your Honor requires something, we would be more than happy, willing and happy to do that. We've been paying regular child support at three, I think it's 375 a month for uh, three since now. the uh, hearing. And, uh, you know, it adds a cost burden to them, but uh, it's understand understandable if your honor is going to order it. You get to make the rules. I would just ask that he would get it done within the next year. It's a six-month thing, so start it when you think you can finish six months. Started it a month and a half ago. Oh, you did at options? Okay, great. I didn't get anything from them saying that. I wish they I would have updated. I don't know why they didn't. Amber's been busy. Okay, Mom, I would like to hear from you now. Sure. Um, okay, well, where do I start? The uh, Yes, he has finished the 12 week of, of the drug patch. I did just review it, and I saw that he was presumed positive for cocaine and um, for alcohol. So that is a concern of mine because he is a repeat offender in the drug courts. What we can give you is a standing order that if you see objective signs of impairment that you could send him, I could give you one that's a drug test, one that's an alcohol test, but if he comes back clean, you would have to reimburse that and give him compensatory time because even if you thought that he was but he wasn't, that would be prejudicial to him unless he was made whole by paying him back for the cost of whatever test you sent him for and giving him extra time that he missed with the child. If he comes back dirty, different story well he actually has not paid me back for my drug testing that came back negative because per your order last time he is to compensate me for that um, we can address that too okay and then as far as um, let's let's start here the nude photographs was not addressed at Kern's court um, that has nothing to do with the CPS uh, case that was uh, mentioned in the previous uh, notes here. Right, I struck it because it was inappropriate right. to be filed. But that, I just want to let you know that that was actually incorrect. That was not addressed with Kearns whatsoever. I didn't even see Kearns. I didn't even talk to Kearns. Um, that wasn't even mentioned as far as 
him being photographed nude with my daughter. Um, the child support has not been paid on time. However, it is being handled by that court, by the child support court and that judge. I do have a copy here. She asked if she can please keep handling that. She wanted to give me... Well, let me explain how that works just so you understand. Mm -hmm. That case that he, that's over there is actually assigned to this court. And those are hearing masters, but because we have just too many cases um, in the county, they have to be heard by hearing masters. So if either party, you or dad, objects, you think they've done something you, you don't agree with, he thinks they've done something um, he doesn't agree with, he wants to make a motion, you want to make a motion, the DA is able to do that on behalf of both of you. Okay. And they, they are able to investigate, reach out and find out what's really going on. The court has to take only what you bring to it in a court of law. We don't investigate. So you're in a better position. You don't really have to hire a lawyer over there, but you can. And if either one of you objects, you get before me anyways. So yes, they can keep handling it, the enforcement and collection. And if either one of you disagree with any of their, it's called the MRO, Master's Recommendation and Order, mm -hmm. that, yes. then you have 10 judicial days, two weeks, to file an objection, and then I put it on my calendar. Okay. Well, just letting you know that it, that is being handled. Um, however, the payments are not being paid on time, and he is in arrears. Well, they're keeping track of that. They're going to naturally be a little behind because they they don't jump right on it as fast as you might like because they have so many cases. So they're keeping tra they're keeping an audit. Okay, um, and also regarding uh, unsupervised visitation, per your order last time, um, he is not to get any unsupervised visitation until he is done with that 12 week drug patch. Once he is done with that, then it could be supervised by a family member. However, there is that's no not the rule. That's not the order. That that is in your um, your order. After six weeks then he could begin uh, unsupervised. After oh, no, 12 weeks, after 12 weeks, he can have... It's supervised. Everything has been supervised. Plaintiff, upon being six weeks clean on the patch program, may have supervised visitation with the minor child with a family member, member pending supervision. He, he, my standard order for 13 years has been if you complete your 12 weeks consecutive clean on a patch if drugs are the issue that you don't have to be supervised anymore unless there are other issues that make the, the person a, ch a danger to the child. Well, per your order, six weeks was to be supervised by Donna's house. The other six weeks was to be, or the other remaining weeks were to be supervised by a family member. If there was somebody. If there was, but unfortunately. Yeah, Donna's no. house or either one. It's not, it, what you need to understand is the, the preference is for a family member because it's better for children and the adults who are being supervised. It's a, it's a less intrusive, institutionalized setting, if you can get that. People can't always agree. But I'm not trying to extend his supervision half at Donna's house and half with a relative. I was saying after six weeks of, of being clean, he can, if you can find a relative, have that person supervised, and Donna's house was your fallback position because that's all we have to offer through the court. Correct. So are you arguing he shouldn't have un unsupervised at this point? And if Absolutely not have unsupervised visitation because he still has not completed that 28 week course that you had recommended and per my notes here and per per the order that is what it seems to that was what was um, made clear to me at that time and plus there is still a restraining order in effect um, until March and he has violated that restraining order on December 26th his mother has contacted my job two weeks prior to that and she's also contacted me via Instagram giving me two messages so I do not trust the unsupervised visitations at this time. And those photos are a huge concern. The reason why the case wasn't blown up the way it was is because I mitigated the situation by leaving. And that is what CPS had told me. If I had not have le left him. Objection. She's denying her own photos. Don't interrupt her. You're going to be Those are the photos contempt. that he had text messaged me, and I do have evidence of that. And I have submitted that to you. And Your Honor, if this is, is an issue about unsupervised versus supervised visitation, maybe we should have a hearing, put some folks on the stand, and show the photos and show the other photos and the other side of the story. The other photos do not pertain to our daughter whatsoever. The photos that you saw have our daughter in them. And therefore, that is why I do not believe that this is, is safe for my daughter to even be around him unsupervised. That is, that is my main concern. And also, with his parents that he does reside with, I, have, I do have documentation that his father is a three-time convicted felon. He has been to prison. His mother 
Is this I, is this new news? Because if this you is not new news, this is then that means you've already you already knew about it prior to the these orders, correct? No, I put these I, every. If you look back in all of our filings, I have submitted all of this information in with my filings, along with evidence. Well, with regard to the picture, I can make an order that that can never occur again. I'm forcing him to take the domestic violence course because he had two more TPOs. Your complaints about his father, you need to tell me why he's a danger and if... if because they have threatened me. He has come to my job and I do have... To the child. Why is he a danger to the child? If he threatens me, therefore he is threatening to my child because I take care of Autumn. What, what kind of threats? Threats that I'm... He, he has threatened me with FBI. He says that I'm, my, I'm being tapped with FBI. I'm in for a rude awakening because they say that I uh, committed perjury before the courts in front of Judge Kearns, which is completely false because I never even spoke to Judge Kearns. I just simply arrived with my, um, what is she called? My um, um, victim witness coordinator. Your, um, activate, your advocate for yes, the safe nest? Yes, victim's advocate. So uh, there's been a lot of threats that have been made. Um, his mom has been threatening to me. She has tried to hit me in the past when I was pregnant. Even he's, she's even struck her own son. It's just, it's a very volatile, very dangerous situation. And I do fear that there is a huge risk of my daughter disappearing. And I provided that with um, the evidence from that GoFundMe account and things that his mother wrote on there that she would kidnap her grandson if she could. And all of that stuff was made up. Everything was completely false as far as that GoFundMe account goes. And it was detrimental to the entire family, especially what would have been my sister-in-law at the time. And I, I even provided that case number and everything, so I'm not sure if you've even researched into that case, but it's a you, very I can't scary research situation. anything. The court can't look at anything. I can't even go on the Internet and look up your address. I'm not allowed to look at anything unless it's here in court and you both have seen it. That's I why the process it. is more fair. Okay, listen, the things that you're talking about ha are, if they are proven true, do not mean that dad can't have a relationship with his child. I just have to put orders in place that make boundaries that if they're violated, I have no jurisdiction over his family, just you and him, Correct. okay, and, and, and the child. So a behavior order, if it's been violated, and I think we have one in this case, don't we? Check and see if we do, but I'm pretty sure I put it in place the very first hearing. A behavior order, if it's violated, and it can be proven through admission or an evidentiary hearing, is punishable by contempt, and a behavior order includes advising your friends and relatives and significant others they're not allowed to disparage the other person, no harassing. I mean, it's a mutual order that tries to keep everybody civil, and I take it seriously so that if you, we have an evidentiary hearing and it's proven that someone's violated it, I lean more toward a jail time sanction than a financial sanction because I think it, people feel it more. And at the same time, I, I, I understand you guys are so different in your personalities and that your styles of parenting are going to be night and day and that, that there's been a problem with that in his criminal history. He was using cocaine for sure, which can make somebody very angry and, you know, have a quick uh, temper or impulse control problems. There's been some immature behavior, but it doesn't mean that he can't have a relationship with his child. It doesn't. It, 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 and, and may I ask you what about the photographs? How, how, do, how do we explain that then? What we say is that was extremely inappropriate and you can never do that again. What if it happens again? And what if my daughter gets molested? And what if she does get kidnapped? It is the question. Why are you talking about molestation? That's because the first time that, I've heard that I don't, in this case. Because that is what the detective has asked me. In March 2015, when he finally interviewed me regarding those photos, he asked me, do you believe that your daughter was molested? And I said, I have no idea. I don't, I don't want to think so. He wouldn't do that to her. But it is lewdness with a minor. And it does question his character. And why would I want my daughter unsupervised? Why? It scares me to death. And it's just kind of like handing her out and I'm sitting here going, please let her be okay. Just even if, if he was driving because of his driving record, please let her be okay. Please, I hope that I get her back because I don't know if we're going to kidnap her, take her to Utah, take her to North Dakota, take her to whatever state that they have their family in. 
it, it's very scary to me, Your Honor. And I do, I do respect that he, he wants to have a relationship with her. I just feel that at this time, because of everything that we've been to, through, and everything that his record has shown, I don't trust it yet. Not yet. And per your order, you, uh, 28 weeks of this course, and you told me that it would, we would consider going unsupervised for visitation. I just, I, it scares me to death right now. I feel very comfortable at Donna's house. Yes, it's a huge, it's a huge burden, I'm sure, for both of us, because I, it takes me 45 minutes to even get there and 45 minutes to get back home. There's nothing in the order which was filed this October 27, 2015, after the August 27, 2015 hearing, wh which was the order that I said he has to do the patch, he has to do the DV classes. His unsupervised visits are not uh, contingent upon completing the DV assessment. He had to prove he's clean to me. He can be doing the DV classes while he has time with the child okay. and and you'll see if you look at why aren't these pages numbered that's my fault it's page 2 line 19 through 21 is the discussion around going to options for the DV violence assessment which is the last thing that's mentioned after all the discussion about the drug uh, requirements and uh, when he can begin to have supervised but my standard order always is I've, n I've never made it different because to me, I can't, I'd like to see people get treatment, but a lot of people can't afford treatment and you have fundamental right to associate and help raise your children unless you're unfit. And if he can prove he can stay clean for 12 weeks, which that is a pretty long time for somebody, if they're an addict, they generally can't make it. So what do you think about the fact that he was able to do it? I mean, he probably does have a problem, but if he was able to stay off for 12 weeks, it's because, Your Honor, he is an addict, and so therefore, if he cannot have one substance, he will go to another, and that was alcohol. I have talked to his sister-in-law, who just recently moved out of the house with them, and said, she begged me, please do not let Autumn have any unsupervised visitations with Randy. And she begged me, because he drank, she, he drank up all the alcohol in their house, $4,000 of her money went missing. He never paid for any of the bills. I mean, we What time we talk, frame are we talking about? This was in August. So he may not be doing drugs, but he was using another substance. If he could stay clean for his entire life, that would be amazing. I, I would just, I would totally commend him on that. But for the past 15 years, that has not happened. And the things that he has shared with me during the course of our relationship, that's not the case. His, his, can, his patch started in September. So if you're talking about August, I'm he was August, probably I'm still sorry. using no, Coke. Never. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What do you want to have, Mom? A trial? Because that's the only other thing I can do. I would um, beg of a it. A trial is, is um, it's the that's really all a court I, has the ability to do. Listen I to motion all, hearings, have I trials. I have all the evidence. Um, I don't have an attorney, and I can't afford one because his parents are paying for one. Actually, so, I pay for everything. Please don't okay. interrupt, Dad. And, um, I mean, I've submitted all the evidence to the court. You guys have everything. So as far as witnesses on his stand, I don't know of one person besides his parents that would go up there and testify. And as far as me, I can take my whole family. So it, it's just the bottom line is, is that I feel you guys have the evidence. And what do you suggest his situation. rights be at this point? It's almost like you want supervised. his rights terminated. No, supervised right now. I want him to finish that domestic violence course. He's going to. Then then can we discuss it at that time, Your Honor? No. I don't see why he has to have... Has he ever hit the child? Not in my presence. I don't know what he does. No. He's been at Donna's house, so obviously that can't happen there. My, my concern is her well-being and her safety. What do, you, what do you feel he should have? Give me exactly what you think the order should be. I still think it should be supervised visits at this time until the court does a full DV evaluation on him and maybe some parenting classes. How do I handle the mother who cancels supervised visitation for November 14th, November 28th, December 19th, 
due to your own issues or the child was ill once. I had to work. Right, well, that's his time with the child. And you asked to move it to that day and combine it. I'm off Saturday, Sundays, Your Honor. But I cannot control my job during the holiday season when I have to work that Saturday. I don't get paid time off for that holiday. But then why wouldn't you work with Donna's house and dad to set it on a different day when you're under a different circumstance around the holidays to make sure that a two-year-old maintains a relationship? I don't get off till 5. I don't get home till 6.15. And I have a 13-year-old daughter at home that is by herself. So that's why the evening appointments did not work. That was from, I believe, 7 to 8. And I had called him and said, this isn't working. Because I was getting home at 9.15 at night, around 9 o'clock, 9.15 at night, and my daughter's been there. And she's been alone with no one helping her with any homework. So that's why I moved to the Saturday. But I did give two-week notification for those other two cancel. It actually... That's not yeah. what they say in here. Yes, I did give a two-week notification. Maybe they're not clear about it. Absolutely. And the... Uh, they just say you canceled the visit. One, that was a complete misunderstanding because I thought we only had six weeks of visitation at Donna's house. And then after that, it would go to supervise with a family member. But we didn't have any. I didn't get any correspondence from the attorney. We don't communicate, obviously, because there is a restraining order in effect. So that was a complete miscommunication there. Also. I absolutely would have been there. Let me listen to uh, Mr. Glennon and then... Um, I will. I am going to set a calendar call in an evidentiary hearing, but I am going to set a schedule for that as well. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, Mr. Uh, Crane is off on Wednesdays and on Fridays regularly. Um, certainly, Your Honor can make him not take drugs or alcohol. Have some kind of neutral uh, decision. But, Your Honor, there's two. There's two sides to this story. And there's at least one side saying, Mom just has to be in control and can't give up any of her control. Can't uh, go to the visits. Can't, uh, at the first hearing, he's a druggie. Make him do the patch. Now he's violent. Now he's a, a sex fiend. I think uh, Your Honor can put in the order prohibitions of drugs, alcohol, Keep up the DV classes, no violence, no violating the uh, protective order, uh, but they do have to communicate in order to make the visits. And again, he's got uh, Wednesday and Friday off. If Your Honor has any Friday cases for the actual evidentiary hearing, I would beg you to see Excuse if I can do a Friday. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <clears throat> we Do we still have the April 15th at one thirty? Because if we do, I'd like to utilize that. Yes. Can you guys look at your calendars and remember that that is the day that your taxes are due? April 15th at 1.30, just so in case that's a last-minute deal for you. I haven't got anybody today to take that out of 15 cases. But I don't know if that's because they want to be off on tax day or they know they're going to be filing that last minute. Do you, are you available that day, Robert? April no problem, Your Honor. 1.30? And they'd be stack number one, right? Yes. Okay, so that'd be a firm date. And if that's the case, because of the nature of the claims, what I would do is set it firm for them and set it at nine so they have the whole day. Because this case is not a half a day case with the allegations that they're, that they're making. So, so instead of stacking it, we'll call them firm April 15th as long as Robert can do it. And mom can do it. Yeah. What day of the week is that? Friday. Friday. Yeah, I'm good with that. I have to, everything that I do, I have to call out of work. So, I mean, like I said, my days off are only Saturday, Sunday, but if I can get some sort of paperwork to my job. There'll be a trial order. management order. Perfect. That will tell you that uh, discovery closes 15 days prior to the calendar call, that a pre trial memo is due four days prior to the calendar call. If you want to do discovery like depositions, propound interrogatories, at requests for admissions, requests to produce, these kinds of things, discovery is wide open right now going forward. You have obligations to exchange documents. If you are struggling to get a lawyer, Mom, one of the things you could do is go to the Ask a Lawyer. Um, have you ever been to the Self-Help Center on Thursday afternoon to Ask a Lawyer? They're free. They're free, but you have to set up the appointment ahead of Thursday. 
The only problem is, is every time I have to come here is time out of work, and I only get a certain amount of points per year, and I'm already at the max. Okay, so, well, it's, you know. it, it's up to you. It's up to you whether you want the legal help, the free legal help or not. You Maybe you can ask for an end-of-the-day appointment or something like that, you know, weeks from now so that you can give your office notice. I don't know. You're the one that that has a lot of things that you want to present in a trial. I have to follow the law with regard to trials, and I'm just trying to offer you a way to talk to a lawyer where it doesn't cost you money because it isn't easy to come to court on your own, but more than 50% of the people do it because they can't afford a lawyer's. Yes. So the self-help forms have more pages of instructions than they have pages to fill out, but that doesn't necessarily assist you in putting on a case at trial. I expect there to be a minimum of four copies of all exhibits. Plaintiff is numbers, defendant is alphabetical with letters. Um, they need to be tabbed. I don't want to be spending my trial trying to find exhibit H when there's not a tab on every single one of these exhibits. So one of the, one of the uh, exhibits are going to be for the clerk, so any originals that you're trying to enter will be in the clerk's binder, and then generally you want one for yourself, one for the other side, and I want one so that I can follow on. Sometimes people also make one for the witness so they don't have to keep walking back and forth, but you don't have to. A minimum of four in my court, okay? Pre-trial memo? No, uh, yeah, I do want a calendar call, but it's a firm tr date. Okay. March 31st at 11 a.m. That's a Thursday. The calendar call. What, what is that per exactly? The calendar call is basically looking. Remember, I said four days prior the pretrial memos are due. I would have read those by then and be able to tell has, has anything been settled? Can I help you settle it at the calendar call? It's basically almost a cattle call where I'm just seeing the cases that are about to come up to trial. 87% of cases settle. So I stack three on six, eight, six a week. So at the calendar call, I try to find out who still wants a trial. It's basically to determine, are you ready for trial? Have you done everything you're supposed to do? And what's been settled? What is there left to try? And so do I have to attend that too? Not, not if you have attorney. If you have an attorney appear for you, you could appear by phone if you want to, if you have a really big struggle with your work. But my general practice is, you must be here if you don't have an attorney. In fact, people have been defaulted if they don't show. Your Honor, if, if I may ask you, um, you vacated the trial last time due to the evidence that was submitted, and I would like to know why are we moving forward with another because trial? Because now you're now after I've t when I have somebody using, I don't have adequate cause for a trial. There's a case called Rooney. Basically, if somebody's using, they're not fit to have anything really but supervised until they're clean. He's clean. So now you still don't want him to have the time. I'm not going to keep having hearings about just allegations. My job now is to make a decision. I have to have a trial to do that. So now I have adequate cause for a trial because I have two clean parents, but you still have all these concerns. So even though I've told you a lot of these things can be taken care of with orders, you're not happy with that. And my responsibility is to protect the process and follow the Constitution and give you guys the right to notify each other and have the opportunity to give, present your evidence so that I have everything in front of me before making a decision. That's the way the law works. It's a fair system if people follow the rules. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a trial. So do I present at that time the violations of the restraining order or is that a separate court? It, 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 basically, that is also under me. And if you have violations, yes. then you need to file a motion that states that. You need to be having motions that describe what requests for relief that you want that you want heard unless they've already been filed. Because this is a newer case. This was a 2015 case. So if you've already placed all that in pleadings, we don't have a final order, then you don't have to file a new motion. But if you do file a new motion, I'll basically kick it to the evidentiary hearing unless there's an emergency to be heard between now and then. But if you want contempt found or anything like that, you have to file your motions for order to show cause, submit an order to show cause to the court so I can sign it that says be here, show up. She's asking for your contempt. You, you're supposed to come in and tell me why you're not in contempt. That's how you handle violations of orders, contempt motions. And they have all that paperwork at the self-help center. I can't spend any more time on this case right now because I have two more cases that were to be heard at two. I took this 230 case because a lawyer was on it to save 
funds in terms of lawyers' hourly fees, but I have two cases that are before yours that I can't just keep letting sit out there in the hall. I so, understand, Your Honor, but I'd like, you know, the, for the safety of, of Autumn is priority here, so I would like to know what exactly are we doing from here on forward as far as the visitations go. I'm going to make an order. I already told you that. You're talking to me about the process. Are you clear on the process now? I'm trying to. I okay. apologize. So Dad has Wednesdays and Fridays off. What is the child usually doing on Wednesdays and Fridays currently? She's in daycare. From what time to what time? From uh, 730, 7.30 okay. in the morning until 5.30 at night. Okay. I work. Okay, that's fine. So what, what we're going to do to avoid exchanges with you guys together is dad can come to the daycare anytime between 8 and 9 and pick up the child and bring the child back to the daycare by 4.30 so that there aren't any encounters. And dad can, um, I'm not going to order overnights right now, but honestly, dad, if there are problems with family members, I would limit contact if there are going to be more allegations. If you think that there's a problem that you cannot control, then don't create more problems by introducing the child into family members who are going to create havoc and, and create more of a dr drama at the trial. Yes, Dad. I'm not telling you you can't have them around them, but if there is any danger whatsoever that there's going to be disparagement, I'm, if we don't already have a behavior order, we're going to put one in place right now. I think Your Honor did that. We've had so many cases, I don't know. Oh. Um, Your Honor, the restraining order is regarding her daycare as well, and he is not allowed around the daycare or his family. That is part of the order, because last time they were harassing my daycare provider, and okay. they actually got kicked off of her property. What's the What's the TPO? Um, when is the TPO? No, no, no. I, is you, you're saying the TPO is not expired yet? Correct. Let me see. When does it expire? The last TPO, so it's active until March 10th, 2016. And you feel like you still need the TPO? Absolutely. And has he violated it? Yes. Okay, I know you say that, but you're going to file a motion advising what the proof of that is, correct? Yes, am I able to do that today, or do I, do I have to? No, you have to file it and serve it, because they have the right to respond. D, can you get their email addresses on here? <clears throat> um, so if it can't be the daycare, actually, I can just lift it from the daycare on the TPO order. That's what I'll do. I'll lift it from the daycare. I'd rather have him pick up and drop off at the daycare where there's a lot of other people around than you two doing it yourself. Mom, let me tell you something. You do have a control issue, and you want everything your own way. And, uh, the, and I'm past, going to focus on Autumn. I'm focusing on her 100%, and I think that you are not. You're, I, I hear you. I feel that you're failing to protect my Sorry. daughter from this family. Everything that I have done is within... I, I can order the dad not bring the child around his family during this interim period, just to make it clear that there isn't going to be anything at issue but dad's behavior with the child between now and the trial date. Whether you don't like that or not, Robert, you can make an argument, but I'm going to keep that order in place. Oh, well, no, we don't like it. One well, less thing for mom to be able to argue about. But you're in charge. We're talking about three months. Yeah, it's not that long of a time. So, Dad, you can't leave Clark County with the child if you're, if you're, uh, I'm also going to lift it only in terms of um, if there needs to be a communication between the parents relative to, let's say the child's sick, mom has the child staying, you know, somewhere else and dad can't pick up at the daycare. There can be an email just about an emergency like that where he shouldn't be forced to go down there find out from the daycare the child's not there call his lawyer in panic if you can if you can't have the child there or there's other emergency you can you can email each other or text each other regarding an emergency that's only regarding the child nothing else yes dad 
She's claiming the violation from the 26th. It was because she forgot all my daughter's Christmas gifts at the Marshall's station after Donna's house. I contacted her deliberately because she left 20 outfits there. I was the only reason that I contacted her. gifts at the office. So when he had called me and I had answered the phone, I was quite surprised because I was driving and I had him on speakerphone. And he said, did you deliberately leave the gifts there or did you just choose not to take it? Uh, I don't know what he was talking about. So seems, nothing was given to me. Seems like an issue that we should put people on the stand and hear testimony about. That's why we're going to have a good old-fashioned American trial. When was Dad served with the TPO? Does anybody know? March 9th, 2015. Thank you. Okay. So I'm extending it until April 15th, 2016, the 9 a.m. as a firm date, lifting it only for uh, visitation communication um, and as to uh, daycare exchanges. I don't even know where my daughter's in daycare. What did he say? I don't know where she's in daycare. If Your Honor wants the order to have the daycare provider or the address, maybe we should put that in there. Let's just get it in, in the open court right now. What's the name of the daycare mom and the address? I have to put it in the TPO. Your Honor, I do not agree. I do not agree to this for her safety. And I do not want her family, I don't want his parents going there because of what they did with the last daycare provider. Mom, I ordered he has to leave, it, keep his family away from her. But how else would he be getting there? I have friends. And there's taxis, there's Uber, there's more than multiple of ways to go get her. Well, if you're not able to find a ride other than a family member, you need to let her know by under this emergency communication, I can't find a ride, so I'm not going to be able to get her today. If mom does not immediately provide the name and the address of the daycare please take her downstairs she will be in contempt oh i'm sorry i thought you were still talking no i've asked you to please give the address then i asked you to please give the name of it i, the I said i have to put it in the order is christ kids learning center where is it off of tory pines and alta okay and mom you need to uh, do whatever paperwork you need to do there so that they understand um, that he has the right to pick up and drop off on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wait, I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. Time? I, 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 pick, I drop her off. So what time would he be having her? You said that the child is in daycare between 7.30 and 5.30 on Wednesdays and Fridays. I told him that he can pick up there sometime between 8 and 9 a.m., and drop back off by 4.30 p.m. I still have to pay for that day, Your Honor. I paid for five days full-time day, full daycare. And so therefore... Let me ask you this, Mom. Would you rather have me take away some of your time when you're not at work? Because I can do that just as easily. I thought you would rather I not do that so that you have the quality time that you've already got. My choices are when you're available or when you're not available, and I felt that was more fair. So think it over. Because if I take away your time, it may have to actually be an overnight for him. Because I don't know what else he's going to do. He's going to have a couple hours between 5.30 and, you know, bedtime of 8, 7.30 or 8. That's not going to happen. It's a two-year-old, and he needs to maintain the bond. If he was... 
There are photographs of our daughter on him while he is fully erect. Two of them. And I am not understanding, Your Honor, with all due respect, why you would even allow unsupervised. And it's at this point where if you're going to order that, I respect My it, understanding of that. I'm going to appeal it because I don't agree with this one. You can appeal it, Mom, but I need to let you know that it's an interlocutory order, and they will send it right back and say, go to your trial. To so trial. It's up to you if you want to do that, but the order that I make today will stand, and you won't be able to come in and ask me to change it, because by filing an appeal, I will lose jurisdiction unless there's a new event or transaction to listen to. Anything that's come to date will be stayed, and I will have no jurisdiction to hear it. So you can do that if you want. My understanding of what he did, and you can prove it's something different at trial, is immature. That he did something immature to try to harass you. That's what I think happened. If he can prove something, if you can prove something different, I think it's ridiculous what he did. I think it's a problem behavior. But I also think that he's going to be learning things in that domestic violence class about how to handle his impulse control problems and some of his decision making in better manner and coping, have better coping skills over time. You chose to have a child with this man. He, he, you don't have a case for termination of parental rights, and you have to follow the law just like me. You can't make it up as you go, all right? There are certain standards, and you're going to need to present your case, and I'm going to have to follow the law. I have already told him he cannot do anything like that ever again, that he needs to be appropriate. Bottom line, if you can prove that he has a sexual problem, have at it, okay? You are with him. You know him. I don't know you guys. You're strangers to me other than this court case. So the trial is there for me to get to know more about what you think happened and what you can prove, all right, about each other's character, about each other's parenting abilities or inabilities. All of those things need to be proven to the court. I can't just take your word over his. But there's not there's more than a word. You have a criminal history. You have the the TPOs. You have the police reports. You have all the evidence. Right, but it doesn't mean a person doesn't have a, a, the opportunity to change themselves and have time with their child. You I, you have a standard that isn't the standard that the law allows, and it doesn't seem like you understand that he has a fundamental constitutional right to have that relationship with the child. So it's about his fitness and about your approach to it. They're saying you're too controlling, and that's another issue. If somebody's really controlling, one of, the, one of the things I have to look out under the law is which parent is more likely to facilitate a relationship with the other parent. Right now, you're not. You're not that parent. So the person who wants to be primary needs to be able to show they're able to facilitate a relationship. If we think there's problems, we need to put rules around them so the problems don't occur. I've told him he can't have his family around just so there's not another new allegation. And he's, he's off drugs, and he's in the DV classes. You think there are other problems, and you can present those at trial. And, Your Honor, what shall I do about the cost then? Since if my daughter will not be there for two days a week, and I'm paying for five days a week daycare. What I would advise you to do in terms of thoughts about it is, number one, you, you don't know for sure if dad is going to take every one of those days. And number two, if they have a different plan where you can pay for three days instead of two, if he's regular on doing all those days, then I would say switch to that plan temporarily. One of the, I mean, dad, are you working at all? Yes, ma'am. And you're just off Wednesdays and Fridays? Are you guys splitting the daycare costs? I haven't been able to talk to her. This is the circumstance of everything that's gone on. I asked her Wednesdays and Fridays off because those are the days that I was supposed to have at Donna's house. After my first visitations, she took away Wednesdays and Fridays and only gave me Saturdays. That was after the first week of visitations because it was inconvenient. But when we were first in here, she said that it was convenient for her, Wednesdays and Fridays. After the first week, it wasn't anymore. And it wasn't due to me being home too late. I live out by Blue Diamond. You guys have so much conflict. It amazes me that, I mean, usually we don't see this kind of conflict in a relationship unless there was that kind of passion. So if I was you, I would sit down and try to get to the point where you can talk to each other. If you think his character is that bad, what were you doing with him?
Why were you having a baby with him? If he's well, that bad of a guy, it was, it whose was judgment was it that it created was, it that child? On purpose. We did not plan to have a child, Your Honor. Okay. Most of us are unplanned. Most of us are unplanned. So that was kind of unfair. I just think it would be really important for you to get an attorney because I don't think you understand what you're up against right now. Both sides have their own case and their own facts that they want to present, but I don't hear a case for termination of parental rights, and I don't see a reason why he can't have unsupervised. I'm ordering that he have it. He's got to notify you if he can't attend. You've got to notify him. If there's a reason that the child's not going to be there. By text or email, and text if it's an email, and let him know there's an emergency email. Bottom line, I have to follow the law, and that's what I'm going to do. All right. Again, these are the temporary orders without prejudice to the orders at the evidentiary hearing. If anybody wants anything else heard for the evidentiary hearing that's not already in a pleading, you must file a motion, serve the other side. You can present the court with an OST, meaning order shorting time, if you want it heard prior to the evidentiary hearing because it's an emergency. Um, and if it's not an emergency, I'm going to kick it to the evidentiary hearing anyway. If it's an order to show cause why they should not be held in contempt, please submit the OSC to the court along with the motion so the OSC can be served with the motion so that um, we'll, all of the documents that need to be in place for a finding of contempt have been um, provided to the court and, and served on the other party. Now, I need Robert to do an order from today's hearing. Regarding the visits? They're Wednesday and Friday. Um, between He can pick up between... 8 and 9 at the daycare and drop back off by 4.30. Any uh, provisions regarding drug and alcohol? Oh, right. I did, I did write suspicion. down. I'd, he, I'd rather have Dad uh, no substances, alcohol, or drugs 12 hours prior or during your visitation. Really, you should never be using any substances unless it's a medication. But alcohol nothing 12 hours prior or during your, your time with the child. I want you to continue to follow the TPO except for the way I lifted it today and you'll get a copy of that. The DV classes, continue to take those. Take them ser seriously. It's not really classes. It's more of a group setting where you guys can, you know, get to know each other and talk about ways that you can handle it, your lives better. Most people who take that come out telling me that they feel like it was beneficial. <laughs> better than a class where you're just listening to somebody lecture at you all day long. Um, I also have ordered that he not allow the family to come around the child um, until I can hear more evidence from both sides regarding what the family's involvement is and how it's hurting the child. Obviously, he's not to do anything with regard to inappropriate behavior around the child. For example, having a picture taken of his erect penis with the child in the background or even really being naked around the child in an erect manner is inappropriate. And it would be impressive to the court if you did take some free parenting classes. Mr. Glennon can show you um, what there is available in the hall. We have tons of brochures about them. But the Parenting Project has free classes. Your child is, is only two. So you would be taking nurturing parents and families for six months to five-year-old developmental age levels. That would be impressive if you could do that. I don't know how much time you have on top of the DV classes and your work, and now I'm giving you time with the child during the day. So if you can fit it in, I think it would be a good idea. All right. Anything else? Um, the minutes from the last hearing, I think you ordered me to make the order, and I never got the minutes. Can I make sure that I get them? Maybe I can give you the email. I apologize. Give the clerk the email, and I don't know. I'm sure online somehow I probably can access them, but I couldn't. The other thing I want you to both know that exists are um, the CPS records that you can come and review in camera at, at the courthouse. It needs to be when I'm in court, though, so my marshal can supervise that you don't take notes or, you know, make copies of anything. Um, they're here for both sides at any time to review. And if you're retained, Robert, you're allowed to have a copy as long as it's destroyed at the end of the court case, but those those are uh, subject to EDCR 5.13 where parties can't have them and walk out with them. They can review them and you can have it in court during hearings. Um, and I, if I need to, I might seek to enter it under seal if there's something relevant in there, uh, 
relevant to the case, but in looking at them, the, the last uh, piece was unsubstantiated. So I didn't look at every single thing in here, but I will for the evidentiary hearing, and you should as well. Thank you, Ron. We can set up a time to do that. All right. Robert will draft, and uh, Mom will review and sign off. I would also like to enforce that... Um to be reimbursed for the drug testing. All oh, right, I forgot about that. Dad, you have not reimbursed her to date? I will do that next week. Okay, so by Friday next week, by the 22nd close of business, she'll be reimbursed the cost of her test, which was clean. Have a good afternoon, you guys. Happy New Year. And okay. I'm set, uh, maybe Your Honor would think about a seven-day order a seven-day review and then submit something like that oh yeah that is my normal order when if you if she's not coming to your office to review and you're sending it to her please send a transmittal letter with a date so that we can tell that she had seven judicial days that's longer than seven days it's seven working days to review and sign off if you have a question or if you put in language that you think is wrong, he'll copy the minutes on you as well. Then you can call him and, and say, why is this in here? He mandatorily has to put in certain statutory language. So if it's just statements of the law, don't worry about it because that's what he has to do. If it's different than the minutes, ask him why. Does he feel like that was the order and the, the minutes were wrong? Call him first before refusing to sign off. If it does match the minutes, the minutes are right, and she doesn't sign off within seven judicial days, the court will sign off. But you have a right. Or I have to go to the office. No, can he mail. can mail it to you. But I told him if he mails it to you, I need to know when it was mailed. Because I would give you the three days for mailing plus seven days to review and sign off. When I'm, when I'm looking at it, trying to figure out if we've had enough time. All right. Very good. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. What's left of it?